Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I'm going to walk you through the process of valuing a quest of therapeutic stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Let's get started with the model. This is a micro cap company, 174 million market cap. They're trading at 260 a share and they have 67 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So it's negative every single year, except in the trailing 12 months, they did have a positive 6 million. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses, and that's negative every year. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that doesn't really move around $50 million a year. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that's 158 million. We discounted the numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $138 million. We divide that by 67 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 207. The trading at 260, so the trading at a 26% premium. It's a sell according to the model. It's really hard to predict the future of a company like this because if they do develop a drug that gets FDA approval, their revenue can skyrocket. But if you own this stock, you know that could take a really long time and cost a lot of money. They're almost there. They do have a drug in phase three. That's the phase right before FDA approval. Here's a list of 15 companies in the same industry as AQST. And if they have a number in red, they're worse than the median. If they have a number in blue, they're better. They only spend $1 million in CapEx. We can't look at their debt to equity ratio since they have negative equity. They do have positive free cash flow, really small positive. They're a tiny company, only $174 million market cap. We can't look at their price to book since they have negative equity. We can't look at their PE since they have negative earnings. Their price to free cash flow isn't so great because they're not generating that much free cash flow. Price of sales is decent, 3.6. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. This means investors are paying $3.60 for $1 revenue. They don't generate too much revenue, only $48 million, And their five-year annual revenue growth rate is negative 5%. The big news with this company is that they're in phase three with their epinephrine drug. They dosed their first patient in phase three because each phase has volunteers, people who take the drug, and then the company writes the effects of the drug on that person. And they usually have many, many people who volunteer for these clinical trials. Because you have to administer the drug to different types of people, men, women, black, white, etc. And you have to give varying doses to see the effects on the person. The way it works is they do a randomized study that's designed to compare the PK, pharmacokinetics, and pharmacodynamics of single and repeat doses of analofilm versus single repeat doses of epinephrine IM injection and epinephrine autoinjectors in healthy adults. The main objective is to compare the pharmacokinetics. Pharmacokinetics is a study of absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion of drugs. They need to identify how the drug moves through the body and affects the individual. Quoting the company, with the dosing of our first patient, we are officially one step closer to reaching our goal of filing our Anafilm new drug application with the FDA in 2024. Part A of the two-part phase three trial is with 36 individuals. Part B has 64 subjects. So it takes a lot of time and money to do these trials. To complete all the phases of the clinical trials, can sometimes take decades and billions and billions of dollars. Phase one is to evaluate the safety of the drug, determine the right dosage, and identify any side effects. About 70% of drugs move to the next phase. So if you have 100 drugs in phase one, only 70 will make it to phase two. In phase two, they do more testing with patients, testing the effectiveness of the drug, and evaluate further safety and only one third of the drugs pass this phase. So if you started with 100 drugs, 23 will make it to phase three. In phase three, they confirm the effectiveness, monitor side effects, compare it to other treatments, other drugs, and collect more information. 
only one quarter of these drugs will move to the next phase. So phase four is FDA approval. If you make it to phase four, then you could sell the drug commercially. So if you start with 100 drugs, about six will make it to phase four. So the reason drug companies charge so much money is not because of the drugs that make it to phase four. It's all the money they spent on the 94 drugs that didn't make it to phase four. They have to recoup their investment in this drug and all the other drugs that failed. Let's take a look at their most recent 10Q from 9-30-2023. In the third quarter of 2023, revenue of 13 million up from 11.5 million. For the trailing nine months, revenue of 37 million compared to the trailing nine months of 2022, 37 million. Let's see what the 13 million represents. 11.5 million of manufacturer and supply revenue, 1.1 million of license and royalty revenue, and half a million of code development and research fees. Of the 13 million of revenue, 10 million is in the US, 3 million is in XUS. XUS is all countries outside the US. It kind of sounds odd. It makes it sound like it was a country that used to be part of the United States that's not part of it anymore. They should just call this international. They do have one drug that's commercialized, their CNS product, Sympazam. CNS stands for Central Nervous System. And that's been out for quite a while since December 2018. So not much revenue for a drug that's been out for four years. Their total expenses are 15 million. Since their expenses are higher than their revenue, they have an operating loss of 2.4 million. It is less than last year, they had a loss of 9 million. They spend 1.3 million of interest on their debt. They receive 1.5 million of interest income on their investments. So a net loss of 2.2 million. They are diluting their shareholders. Last year they had 53 million shares outstanding. Now they have 65 million. Let's look at their balance sheet. Current assets of 42 million. Current liabilities of 24 million. So their current ratio is almost two. They have total assets of 59 million. A little higher than last year, 57 million. Total liabilities of 162 million. Lower than last year, of 175 million. Assets of 59 million minus liabilities of 162 million equals equity of negative 102 million. They're worth less than zero. They're worth negative 102 million dollars. This means they raised 208 million dollars from selling their business, selling common stock. And they use that money to run their business and their business lost 310 million dollars. That's how they have a deficit of 102 million. We'll look at the statement of cash flows. This is for the trailing nine months. They did have a gain of 240,000, but an operating loss of 1.4 million. Operating cash flow is a cash the company loses from its operational business. Net income is a company's accounting profit or loss. They spent 1 million in CapEx. These are investments in property, plant, and equipment. They raised 5.3 million from selling common stock. They raised 8.3 million from selling warrants. Warrants are long dated options. They pay 12 and a half million of debt on the principal payments of their lease liabilities. And they pay down another 1 million of debt. So when you add up their cash flow from operations, cash flow from investing, and cash flow from financing, you have negative 2.4 million of cash for the first nine months of 2023. In the beginning of the counting period, they had 27.3 million of cash. Cash at the beginning of period. And if you look on the balance sheet, you can see their cash was 27.3 million on 12-31-2022. And as of 9-30-2023, they had cash of 24.9 million. I'll show you this on the statement of cash flows. Cash at the end of the period, 24.9 million. They started with 27.3 million on 12-31. They lost 2.4 million of cash. Now they have 25 million. This is how their financials are connected. We saw in the beginning of the statement of cash flows, they have net income of 241,000. So that's how the statement of cash flows is connected to the income statement. This 241,000, you see it's right here, their net income for the first nine months of 2023. If you wanna learn more about how the financials are connected, I've done a few videos on that. Let me know in the comments and I'll share the video with you. Let's look at their corporate presentation. This is as of November, 2023. In the next five years, we aim to grow the existing and ex-US collaboration revenue, secure FDA approval for Anafilm in the US, launch Libravant in the US, 
in or before 2027, advanced product candidates utilizing Adrenaverse platform. That's an epinephrine pro-drug platform. They do have some revenue generating drugs, five FDA approved products. That's five more than a lot of companies out there. Eight collaborations. So if you collaborate with other companies, other drug makers, you can pull your resources, expertise together and share in the profits. Because most companies aren't a Pfizer or Merck. They don't have hundreds of billions of dollars sitting in their bank accounts. Most companies are pretty small like this. They only have a few million to pull from. So if they work with another company, they can combine their resources. They have 10 plus years of product sales on six continents. I wouldn't be bragging about that because their revenue is pretty low. Multiple products launched since 2018. 150 plus patents worldwide. I think the game changer is Anafilm. If this gets FDA approval, the stock could go up 10x. Here's their product portfolio and licensing opportunities in 23 and 24. Libervan is diazepam. That's in the filed stage. So they're filing their patents to get FDA approval. Anafilm is getting close. They're in the clinical stage. Their other epinephrine drug, AQST-108, is in the preclinical stage. They have a global licensing agreement for Suboxone. That's a popular drug to treat opioid dependence. They have licensing agreements in Brazil, the European Union, China, as well as in the U.S. Let's look at Anafilm and see what they say about it. Anaphylaxis, a serious systemic hypersensitivity reaction that is usually rapid in onset and may be fatal. 32 million people in the U.S. are at chronic risk for acute anaphylactic episodes. Anaphylaxis is a really serious thing. That's a negative reaction to something. Like for instance, peanuts or bee stings. The direct cost of this is $1.2 billion. Some people could get really sick or even die. About half the people who experienced anaphylaxis had never received an epinephrine auto-injector prescription. With access to this, it could literally save their lives. The epinephrine market has been growing. The volume was 3.6 million in 2017. It's about 4.7 million in 2023. And their product is the first and only oral drug. Most other drugs are injected. And a lot of people don't like needles. Plus, it's not easy to inject yourself, especially if you're out and about. It's pretty easy to take a pill. Libervan is a diazepam product. Diazepam can relieve anxiety. It's not just for anxiety. It can help people with seizures. There are 1 million patients that suffer from epilepsy. Each year there are 1 million people that visit the emergency room with seizures. Look how easy it is to use this drug. It's like a stick of gum. Put it in the roof of your mouth. It's much easier than this and it's also easier than this. Here's their stock price since they started trading in mid-2018. They IPO'd at $15. After one month, it hit its peak at $18. And it got really low in mid-2022, under 50 cents a share. So if you bought it above $5, $10, you may never be green unless the company starts selling lots of drugs. Now that their epinephrine drug is in phase three, the stock got a big boost. But their revenue hasn't gone up. There's the potential to make more revenue. Since they're losing money year after year, they have to dilute shareholders. Their shares have more than doubled since they started. And the dilution will continue until they become profitable or they go bankrupt. Let's look at the company on Simply Wall Street. It's last price 263, 175 million market cap, up 12% in the past week, up 165% in the past year. Let's see what they say about the company. Equestive is a pharmaceutical company focusing on identifying, developing, and commercializing various products to address unmet medical needs in the U.S. and internationally. They currently market Sympazam, Suboxone, Zooplens, and Asteris. That's a once daily product for the treatment of ADHD. They were incorporated in 2004. 20 years ago, headquartered in Warren, New Jersey. Simply Wall Street is at 1168. They say the stock is 78% undervalued. Six analysts priced this stock at 633. Their revenue in 2016 is 50 million, where it is today. 
Its highest was in 2018, 77 million. Their revenue forecast by 2026 is 79 million. Not much of a growth. Their debt is pretty steady, 39 million in 2016, 39 million currently. But their equity seems to be getting worse each year. It's negative 100 million. And this green line is their cash. So they have 25 million of cash on their balance sheet, a little less than their debt. 60% of the companies held by the general public, 27% by institutions, 7% by hedge funds, and 6% by insiders. Their biggest shareholder is Branton Capital Management. I think this is a boutique hedge fund in Texas. They own 15% of the company. Armistice Capital, a hedge fund in New York, owns 7%. Then Vanguard. BlackRock is on the list. And you can see a lot of individuals own the stock. A bearish sign is when employee count goes down. Their employee count peaked in 2018 at 277. It's down to 130 by the end of 2022. And the ticker only trades in one place, the NASDAQ. So let me know what you think. Give the video a like, subscribe, or comment below. If you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.